Hello, welcome to another episode of Fully Charged News, this time coming from the Scrabster to Stromness Ferry in the North Atlantic. But before I go on, I just want to mention uh, four special Patreons who've been amazing and supported Fully Charged for the last year or so. Sebastian Schoberg, Pez Kakao, Lionel Rockman and Engineer Better. Thank you very much for supporting Fully Charged, it's really appreciated. Beautiful fresh air out here and as we approach the Orkneys I can see the old man of Hoy in the distance over there. Uh, and we're very lucky to have fresh air like this because if you live in a city in the UK you're less lucky because the, the, the air quality in cities is constantly de declining. And uh, recently the, uh, the government of the British Isles uh, delivered a white paper of truly pathetic fossil funded nonsense. I mean really, really offensive. To, because they don't want to diminish the, the number of diesel cars on the road. They want to keep set, making people buy diesel cars. They want to keep selling diesel. I mean, are they funded by the fossil fuel industry? Does the Pope live in Rome? Who do we blame for diesels? Do we blame the drivers, the people who've bought the cars, the people who've been conned into buying diesel cars, who've been lied to for decades about how good and clean, new clean diesel is? It's not clean, it's filthy, it's toxic, it's disgusting, it's old steam age technology, and we should dump it as soon as possible. And it's only being supported by the manufacturers and the bloody oil companies, and I'm really upset about it. There's nothing we can do because this government are set to just get stronger and force more of their rubbish 20th century, 19th century attitudes uh, on the rest of us. So, you know, we're stuffed really, but it is very, very offensive and annoying. And please get angry about it and be upset and be rude about it. And if you drive a diesel car, it's not your fault. I don't blame people who drive diesel cars, but if you're gonna buy a new car, don't buy a poxy, crappy, clean and in inverted com commas diesel, because they don't exist. They're all filthy and disgusting. <sighs> there we go, I've gotten that rant off my chest. On the flip side though, on a really good story, is that Transport for London, who are the local city authority, and this is what's happening all around the world. Big politicians like your Trump and your May and your Le Pen probably by the time you see this, you know, archaic nationalist, old school, you know, let's burn coal and make children sweep the chimneys. That's what they want to do. But in individual states in the United States and individual cities all over Europe are pushing ahead amazing stuff. Transport for London, very good example, are installing 300 rapid charges for the electric taxis. We're going to do a show about the new electric taxis coming to London soon. But we're currently uh, in the North Sea. Well, we're in the North Atlantic, but the North Sea sort of over there, which is really the home for the last uh, 40 or 50 years of the British oil and gas industry. And we've been sucking oil and gas from underneath these, these waters for, for a long, long time. Of course, it's run out, because that's what happens. <laughs> it runs out. I know I shouldn't laugh, but they're currently decommissioning billions of tons of heavy, incredibly well-built steel infrastructure that's stuck out at sea to suck up oil and gas. And they're gonna, they're gonna scrap it because there's no point having it out there. And we went past a, a loch earlier on today that is basically full of metal because it's just massive oil and gas platforms that have been brought in off the North Sea to be decommissioned, to be scrapped. But just a few days ago, I met some amazing engineers who've, one in particular, who'd worked in the oil and gas industry for the last uh, 40 years, and he's now working on offshore wind because the technology that's been developed to, to extract oil and gas from out in very hostile environments like out in the sea, is perfect for offshore wind, so they know how to sink a great big uh, tower into the seabed, which won't fall over, and they put a massive wind turbine on the top. The Humber, the Humber region in, in the UK is an amazing, it's had amazing industrial resurgence, so that's where they make the really big uh, wind turbine blades. Another thing we're going to be doing soon on Fully Charged. There, there is this amazing new body called the Energy Transition Commission. It's brought together big companies, really big multinational companies from the oil and gas industry, from mining, from uh, universities, and they're all developing uh, zero carbon energy sources. And they're really, this is like, this isn't like me and a few of my hippie mates from the 1970s. This is massive companies. Uh, investing billions, literally billions, in uh, particularly in offshore wind at the moment, but in all sorts of new technologies. And they're all pushing the notion that we can be 100% renewably powered in the next 10 to 15 years. They're not talking the next 100 years. And that argument is, is getting, gaining more and more sway. Now, recently I was in Marrakesh, so I've been in, I've spent some time in, uh, in Mumbai, in India, and in, now recently in Marrakesh. And in both of those cities, the street pollution from 
fossil fuel burning, particularly scooters and little mopeds and things, is truly catastrophic. My wife had a, a very severe asthma attack when we were in Marrakesh, simply from being outside on the street. The, the smoke, I mean, I don't get asthma. My eyes were running, my throat was sore, and that is normal. That is normal in those cities. And it's because those bikes have been pushed to those people. They're cheap, they're cheap to run, uh, the fuel is cheap. But there is now finally a, a, a determination from the governments of those countries to start doing something about this because it's killing millions of people every year in the world and it's really shocking. In India, the, by 2030, they won't allow any fossil fuel powered vehicles to be sold in India. So you imagine what that signal sends to manufacturers because India is a massive market. So they are really pushing to, to clean up the, the air pollution in their cities. It causes over 2 million deaths a year in India. People who die directly as a result of, of smog in India. Uh, Delhi has 13 times the annual limit from the World Health Organization for what is safe for humans to breathe. 13 times more is quite bad. London is about five times more, and I know how unpleasant London is. Finally, I think this is worth mentioning just because it's so bonkers, flying cars. I mean, I'm sick of hearing about flying cars, and flying cars are such a dumb idea, but this amazing uh, new, new invention from Germany is truly, truly extraordinary. Ducted fans. I've got a feeling ducted, we're going to hear a lot about ducted fans. This is a purely electric flying vehicle, flying machine, I think you can call it, and, it's, and it's, they call it an electric jet. And that, that technology, I think, has got a great future, not for flying cars. I mean, really, are we all going to go around in flying cars? I'm not a big proponent of flying cars. I'd never go in one. No, I'd go and look at one flying. I wouldn't have a go in one. <laughs> It's just the thing is that these machines, if there isn't any motive force behind them, they're just going to hit the ground, like a helicopter, you know, they can't sort of glide. But uh, I think it's, it's an extraordinary breakthrough what they've done, they, and they, uh, this is a machine that can fly at 300 kilometres an hour and it can fly for an hour, so you can fly 300 kilometres in it, which is fairly obvious. Ducted fans, marvellous. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more about ducted fans. But finally, here's a few names of a few uh, Patreon supporters who, su <coughs> who support Fully Charged for £10 a month or more. And these people are just extraordinary. And I've been trying to catch up with all the names I'll read out, and I'm very slow and a bit behind. But here's a few. Mark Verbinen, thank you, Mark. Richard Bearwell, great Richard. Baron Helljug, here we go. There you go, Baron Helljug. Stephen Hammond, probably not Richard's brother, and probably really into electric cars. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Vanita Greenwood, uh, Don McAllister, thank you Don. Don's an absolute genius, I know Don. Chris Lowe, Daniel Lacumu, Luke Kavanagh, and Wajahat Haider. All of those people, brilliant. Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, there'll be more news soon, there'll be more episodes. There'll be a lot of episodes about uh, Orkney, which I, okay, now, oh, the old man of Hoy. Uh, <laughs> so do join us again on Fully Charged. And uh, as always, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>